boy. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome, friends, relatives. Uh, we are here um, at the One Earth Live Festival. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the global audience, relatives all over the globe. Uh, my name is Shuteska Tonatiu, Machanon Pain, Boler Colorado Al Tepet, Iwani, Mexico Tenochtitlan. My people are the Mexica peoples of Mexico Tenochtitlan. I'm grateful to be here hosting a really beautiful conversation with two of my sisters um, who have done, who I've walked alongside and done a bunch of really beautiful organizing work um, over the last few years. Um, Nina and Tokata. Uh, I would honestly just love to like open up a little space for y'all to introduce yourselves a little bit about, you know, who you are, where are your people, where y'all from. Uh, we have a really exciting conversation, I think, now bringing Native voices, Native youth kind of to the forefront of reflecting on and, and kind of curating this conversation around like what's going on in the world right now and, and how do our voices need to be heard and represented, I think is so important. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to y'all. Please go ahead and just let us know who you are, where you're from. Um, yeah, what do the people need to know about y'all? Go ahead, talk about Name, you know. Okay. Um, Hamidak Yapi, Chantewa Shteanape, Chizapi, Tokatawi, Ionais, Emachiapi, Nama Kocha Jewaniatumi, Io Slaha, Emataha, Nawazia Haha, Elwatia. Hi, everyone. My name is Tokata. I'm from the Standing Rock Reservation, and right now I'm living on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Um, I'm Hunkwapa in Oguala, Lakota, and I'm so happy to be here with y'all today. Some of my favorite people up on this call right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I so I would say that the only things that you need to know about me are I am indigenous. <laughs> I am 16, and I am proud to be Lakota beautiful yes um hello everybody uh my name is nina berglund i'm northern cheyenne in oglala lakota i my spirit names is Northern Lights Woman and Appears in the Morning Woman. I currently live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am 20 years old and I also am very proud to be Lakota. <laughs> and North I am. Mm -hmm. No, I, I appreciate I appreciate that a lot. Um I think we're living in a crazy time right now, you know, and, and each of us are in um in different places in the country, um, surrounded by different kinds of community. Um, I think one thing is a lot of the work that we do, you know, both as as organizers, as leaders, as water protectors, um, has to do, I think, oftentimes with like gathering in person, with being out, mobilizing in the streets. I, I remember the last couple of times I saw y'all were, you know, in New York or, or in Washington, D.C., you know, uh, lobbying elected officials, you know, and I think the, the work in, especially in, in the climate and environmental justice movement, I think this this time has been like really potent for young people to be out there and to be sharing their stories, to be sharing their voices. Um, and I've just been really proud, honestly, to see how you two are, have like stepped up and continue to like share your voices, even amidst this transition of so many events. And even you look at like the whole Earth Day Live thing, like everything is kind of transitioning in, in this time of, of existing and living within a pandemic. Um, I guess I, I would love to just hear from y'all a little bit about, you know, what does this experience look like and mean for y'all in your communities, uh, in your households? I, I know like quarantine is different for each person. Um, and especially in indigenous communities, there's both a lot of hardship, but also um, a lot of resilience happening, a lot of community, uh, a lot of community care, a lot of indigenized, you know, approaches to, to healing and, and health um, that are really powerful as well. Um, so Tokata, I would love to, to hear from, from you and then and Nina a little bit about like what that looks like in your own space. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is, it's definitely changed everything. I think one thing that we can say that 
like is is true for everybody right now is that we are all affected by this pandemic like it doesn't matter where you come from or where you're living right now like this has shaken sort of the entire globe um but i i think for indigenous communities it's just it, it's been different because first of all i mean we're we're resilient communities but we've been living with um sort of the side effects of the pandemic for a really long time i i think this has just shown um the world and especially the us right now sort of what um living in poverty what living with um genocide as something that you've survived like this is the experience of being an Indian in America, I think. And, and, you know, letting people know that this sort of state of emergency that we are in right now is a state of being for many people who don't have the same privileges as, um, you know, white upper class Americans. And, um, you know, I, I think it's just, it's uniting everybody and it's saying you know we all deserve uh our, our rights taken care of we all deserve a safe place to call home we all deserve to feel safe in times of need um and and especially in indigenous communities i think it's just something that it, like it's you know it, it's it's very threatening because we have a lot of very um important people in our communities who are high risk um, I think like a lot of our elders, you know, we we have already faced like these epidemics of diabetes, of high blood pressure, you know, all of these other things that make us um, more susceptible to things like COVID. Um, and so it's definitely, it's put me on high alert. I think the same can be said for my entire family. Um, but at the same time, like it, it gives us time to step away, I think, from from everything. Um, and 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 you know, being able to isolate myself with my family has just shown me, um, I think, how healing it can be to look to the people we love for guidance. I think that a lot of the times, especially like myself, like uh, as, a, as a young Indigenous woman and activist, like, I think a lot of the times I get stuck in my own head and being able to like, acknowledge that like right now in, in our communities, we've at least created some sort of safe space for indigenous identity and, and and being able to look to those around me for for love and guidance in this time has been crucial that's beautiful grateful to hear that reflection and the it's it's not linear you know so there's 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 i'm hearing reflections of like a lot of different pieces a lot of different things nina how you feeling how you feeling right now out there in, in the midwest <laughs> yeah um i mean this yeah like tokata said this pandemic has really affected you know it's totally changed our every single like day by day lives like around um i don't know it's very interesting like i've been talking with my family a lot and my mom and just kind of reflecting on how we've been living our lives you know before this point and um all the things we were kind of uh, kind of ignorant about I guess is like the things that like one of the things I've been thinking about is the people who have been living like this you know who have um, underlying health conditions who how careless I've been I guess in my like beforehand you know not washing my hands not being like considerate of people who you know that like the type of viruses I could have been spreading to them before and I think definitely like coming out of this a lot of people are going to be a lot more a mindful i guess because of this time you know in the next like couple years as we move past this a lot of people are going to be like thinking twice about you know our elders and thinking about like how do we keep them safe you know outside of a pandemic how are we making sure they have what they need outside of you know worrying about their lives whether or not they're going to be taken by by a virus um yeah so it's been a lot of like reflecting a lot of just sitting and wondering what I'm gonna do, you know, like today or tomorrow, next day. Um, I really think that mental health is something that's really important that I wanted to talk about that's like really been affecting me, I guess. And my friends, like we talk about it a lot, is just like this like, like anxiety of like, cause I know people who like struggle with mental health, like, you know, being stuck in that isolative state, it, you know, it messes you up. It can really put you in, you know, some really hard, like, mindsets, and especially when you're surrounded by, 
you know, maybe an unsafe, like, um, home environment? What if you're at, you know, if your isolation place is not that safe for you? And that's been with some people that I know is that wondering if that violence is going to be, you know, constant, they can't go anywhere, they can't get away from it, they can't go visit, you know, the people that they trusted, you know, because of this virus. And so I, I don't know, it's just been it's been a lot my um and more of the plus side i guess <laughs> uh, my family is working towards um putting a garden in our backyard which mm. we live in the city and we don't ever have very much um like yard space but we're really um trying to get it like put together i guess like we went and got some tomato plants and some cucumbers and we yeah. bought later because our um our spiritual like mentor advisor mitch walking out he gave us some spiritual uh, words saying that we should, you know, and that the people should, you know, get prepared. And because you don't know, like this, this time has really shown that you never know what's going to happen and you don't know how prepared you are until it happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our people are still starving. Our people are still struggling to have water and stuff. So I think, you know, the better you're able to prepare yourself and your family, you know, outside of a pandemic, um, you just never really know what's going to happen. So I would definitely recommend everyone to, you know, start thinking about how you can grow foods, how you can start collecting these things for your elders, making sure they have medicines, making sure they have what they need, your family and your community, I think. Um, we can definitely come out of this stronger. And if something more like the climate crisis was to come and really hit us full force, it's, it's, it's to show how ready we are, you know, to take care of ourselves, to really show how to be respectful of ourselves, the earth, and the people around us. Yeah, no, that was so so beautifully put. And I think um, the conversation around mental health, I don't think that's like an isolated conversation um, in the sense that it's not an isolated issue that is separate from the climate crisis or from protecting clean water in our communities or separate from our relationship to our families or even from this pandemic. In, in, um, what I'm seeing in a lot of communities is this this will from from different young people of like striving to um, overcome a lot of these challenges, whether it be you know being at home all, like at home all day, um, kind of through these different different um, avenues to like positively direct our energy. Um, and I, I heard you talking about one of them, which is like growing your own food. That's something that in itself is a powerful act of resistance, because you know part of colonialism that impacted our community so hard was stripping us from our, our our ways of cultivating our own our own food our traditional food um by killing off you know the buffalo for a lot of plains natives um taking away our seeds taking away you know growing these monocrops and so i think in this moment people are looking to like these different ways that can act as not only like pastimes but or or not just like oh we're you know sequestering carbon by like planting our own food but it's really like no we're, we're helping heal our relationships with ourselves we're finding these different things that are in different ways um you know ceremony can be ceremonial or can be prayerful or can be powerful in that way um and, and i'm and i'm curious like what, what are some of the things that, that y'all have found that have helped build bridges for you for yourselves or what are spaces that have, you've seen open up um amidst these different challenges with mental health and with trying to stay hopeful and positive and and there's even a lot of pressure too to be like hyper productive and to be like, oh, like it's a pandemic. Like you have to, you know, get everything together and like do incredible work. And like, and I feel that as an artist, like, oh, I need to finish these albums and like write these songs and be like, you know, that's not necessarily a balanced approach either. So like, I guess I'm curious, you know, you talked about your garden, you talked about spending time and, and checking up on your loved ones, on your elders, Tokata. And like, what are some of those spaces and ways you've channeled that have been like kind of positive spaces for yourself to look to to kind of find a little bit of balance amidst the craziness going on in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits at this time <laughs> um i mean yeah I, I i i can definitely say i've just been like thinking a lot more about like my life and sort of you know my own blessings and opportunities and downfalls and and you know just kind of everything and i, I remember like the other day i was like having like again like a tiny crisis <laughs> and I, I was realizing I was like dang like life's really just like a list of tasks that you make for yourself like <laughs> and I was like I don't want it to be like that like I want to be able to I, I don't want my time to ever be like dedicated um or, or not dedicated but committing to something that like that 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 I I, have, I don't truly believe in and then I realized 
God gave us like the most, like the biggest task of all the tasks, which is like liberation, you know, for our, for our peoples and, and, and for our, our family. And, you know, um, we're, we're, we're already, we've been giving it all the tools. I, I think just a, as a part of who we are to be able to pave the way for the future generations. And it, it really just like, being able to to kind of refine my purpose in that way and 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 I think it also like I was talking to some of my friends the other day just about like self love and how powerful that is for like our like for everyone in general but for indigenous women especially it's such a thing of like beauty and resistance I think it's 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 really like a revolutionary thing to honor who you are and where you come from and all the parts of yourselves and 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 so I've just been I like as a whole, I've just been trying to sort of look at my life as, as something that I, it is, it's a journey, you know, for me to get to know myself better. And um, it, it's been, that's been really comforting, I think, in this, because being able to lean on yourself in times of hardships is crucial, especially, you know, I think for a lot of us who have, who, who are living, you know, in, in sort of, the depths of poverty and in, in, in reservations and in, in in our communities, I think that that's something that we can find often is that these spaces don't feel, um, I think, a lot of times safe enough to to lean on and to look to for support. So being able to find the beauty in that through um, looking at who you are and what the physical place that you're in means for your identity, I think, for a lot of Indigenous folks, being able to look back to that. Um, relationship that you have with the land and and, and with this with nature with everything that's around you and everything that makes you um yeah I, I think that that's beautiful <laughs> mm. 100 <laughs> percent got anything to add yeah oh my gosh totes i i just love you because <laughs> it's so it's like so true you know like especially in this time, um, like, if you don't have family to lean on, like, you really have to, you know, look to yourself and look, and look yourself in the mirror and realize that, you know, you're strong. And that, like, although it seems that, like, the whole world's falling around, like, around you, that, you know, that we've managed to get through some of the most hardest times that, um, as a people, like, we've seen the absolute worst that we could have seen and you know we're still managing to be here today in 2020 to be able you know the descendants of those who um who face those things and so i think with um with like the whole movement in general um i definitely think that you know mental health and you know being aware of your own mental health and your own mental space, um, whether you're doing movement work or whatever it is that you're doing, um, or you're just now um, coming into that here during this pandemic time, I really think that, you know, I always kind of wondered about how to look at my mental health in a way that's not, you know, looking down at it, but as something, it's like a part of me that um, I have to work through that whether it's a tangled mess that's inside my head of things that I'm thinking about, things that are going on, all these different things that um, um, prayer is something that I always have, you know, looked towards just because it's something that has gotten me through some of the hardest times in my, in my life. And I know that that's true for my, for my people and my ancestors is that something that they always say is, or that our elders say is to, is like when we didn't have anything that, you know, we were killed physically, mentally, um, but we have our spirituality, which is our prayer that has always been with us. It's something that has, you know, kept us grounded. And, you know, just whether it's like going outside and offering your tobacco and just saying like, you know, I need help, which is one of the hardest things that, you know, for myself to do is just to you know, break down those barriers and just, you know, be vulnerable, especially, you know, with like whatever you pray to, whatever, you know, whether it's going outside and just giving thanks and putting your hands out and the grass and in the trees and just saying like, you know, I need help. 
and that healing will come that whether it's not you know instantly because <laughs> they say you know that stuff doesn't work instantly so you gotta be and you know you have to want that for yourself and so you know i say just just keep going because we've seen the worst and we're trying to work towards the best so I love I love your shirt that says my sisters are warriors and I and I feel that when I see the two of y'all um and and I witness the work that y'all do in the world um I think in the last years you know I've seen so so many more like you know strong young native sisters stepping up to hold it down and represent um and kind of continue the work you know that our, that our ancestors and our people have done for for so long um and I think that the media or or the mainstream environmental climate movement is slowly beginning to understand like, oh, we really need native voices at the forefront to represent. Because when we talk about climate justice, it's not um, isolated events of, you know, just changing our energy or just changing, po you know, incrementally changing policy. Like we are talking about uprooting systems of of disempowerment and disenfranchisement and colonialism that have affected our communities that's everything that has created the climate crisis right are these like messed up systems that are are the reason behind our water being contaminated or the reason behind our people being you know disrespected and thrown in cages and in their, our land and our treaty rights violated you know it's it's um it's so much deeper than i think what a lot of narratives have have told and, and shared for a long time and so as we are in this moment of this pandemic, I feel a great sense of like an opportunity, right? Where everything of how the world like was usually normally, which was a lot of injustice and a lot of really, you know, horrible, crazy things, a lot of oppression has, um, a lot of these, tr these systems that have just continued cycling and cycling and cycling have, have paused in a lot of ways. A lot of the world has like kind of come to a halt. And not to say that there's not bad stuff still happening or, you know, so many of the injustices are, are getting worse because of these pandemics, because of this pandemic. Um, but what I would say is like, there's an opportunity for us to really look at this moment and say, how do we want to go forward from here? How do we want to cultivate and use this turning point to transform our culture, to transform, um, I think our movements as well. And I think the climate movement has a lot of learning to do and a lot of growth to do. And one of the things that y'all keep talking about that is so powerful with it um, is this idea of healing as like a center point of, of the work we do. Because when we are, we're not just, you know, fighting for climate justice, we're talking about the healing of humanity's relationship with the earth. And I, fundamentally, a lot of our work in the climate space is about healing. So to remember that as like an internal practice as well is so important. Um, and I guess, you know, just, just from the both of y'all, as you see ourselves moving through this time of, of isolation, of distance, um, of a lot of challenges, um, how how can I I'd say what is the role of indigenous youth in helping us carry ourselves into the future, into a more just, connected, sovereign, um, resilient world? And and I think so many of the answers lie within our communities, within the stories our elders tell us, within the visions that our youth have. Um, and I would just love to hear from y'all too. Like, what are some of the things you are seeing? What are the, some of the things that you are hoping for? What are the, some of the things that we are actively paving you know the way for um in this in this like really intense moment nina do you want to go <laughs> okay okay um Wait, guys my dad just showed up i'm gonna go tell him that i'm in here <laughs> they're just Hold on. Tell him I said what's up. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Dad! Should I just continue? Yeah, yeah, or go ahead. I no, you go. Okay. Yeah. So, it's like, it's very interesting to like, um, think about, you know, obviously as Native youth, that's something that we, like where our space is and where, you know, we fit into that healing cycle because, like you said, our our communities are hurting, and they've been hurting, and they're going to continue to hurt until, you know, that, that change that we want to see 
um, comes into flourishing and we're no longer hurting. We're not in this, you know, state of survival that we've been in, you know, since the beginnings of colonialism and capitalism and genocide, all these different things. This is like, we're trying to heal, you know, 500 plus years, this large wound that we all hold somewhere inside of us. Some people, um, they take that hurt and they take that pain, you know, out on themselves, their families, their communities. And, you know, when we really start to look, you know, inside of ourselves and how that wound, the wound that, you know, we feel when we look outside and we realize that you can't speak your language, your lands turned into, you know, a city, that you're stuck on a reservation with not a lot. I don't know. It's like when you realize that you can change, you know, what happens from then on. And I think that's what a lot of us youth that are coming into our power realize is that we can sit and dwell, you know, on all the hardships and all the things that are wrong, or we can do something about it, which is really what empowered me to start taking action and doing is that I can sit around and cry about all these different things and, you know, have that put me down but instead, I, you know, have people like Tokata and Jacelyn Charger and like all these amazing young women who lifted me up and said, come on, like, we're going to go do something about it. And I think that's just all the advice and all the power that I could give, you know, to the young people is that we have our place and it's the ones to move change into the future. And once you start implementing that into your life and it brings you it brings you a lot of, you know, hardships and a lot of obstacles you have to overcome, but then you got to think about all the things like that's just, like one of the things I always think about is like what my ancestors had to endure for me to be here. So what can I do, you know, to be that ancestor for my great grandchildren? And like what kind of legacy can I leave? What kind of change can I do right now that'll affect them? Because, you know, that's traditionally how we think. You know, we think generations ahead because we know that we have the power to do something now that will affect them. And so, you know, our part right now is, you know, heal. Find how, find your power. And when we can, you know, get outside and do our work on the ground, we hope that, you know, you'll be right there with us because we're all, we're all standing next to each other. And we do intend on making this change. Mike, Mike drop on that, on that whole piece. <laughs> Tokati, you got any last words for the people? Anything else you want to share? Um, any last words? Um, I, I think, I think the one thing, you know, that I, I said earlier is just like, yeah, just take the time to, to be easy on yourself and to be kind to yourself because, um, you know, you're the only person who sort of knows what's best for you and you already have the blueprints to navigate um, this situation and, 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 you know, just trust in yourself and in who you are uh, that you'll be okay through this because, I mean, it is a super scary time right now um and and i've also been thinking like uh, so much like just about how um i'm affected kind of by you know everything externally that we are facing as indigenous peoples sort of this constant um terror of like living uh, you know waiting for these fossil fuel industries to come into our communities you know or stressing out about the projects that are already in the ground like really taking the time to say like i understand that externally things might be um in a crisis 
And so I acknowledge that like who I, whoever I am right now and whatever state I am in as my own being, like recognizing and loving that person for who they are um, because they're trying their best right now. <laughs> mm. Appreciate that so much. Um, I think, yeah, I think y'all, y'all hit on a bunch of really important things that I'm going to definitely take time to keep reflecting on too. How this moment, um, while it is reflective of a, of a much larger existential transition, it is also like these micro evolutions that are happening every day in our own self and our own spirits and our own hearts and to hold space for that, you know, to hold space for ourselves. And that's one thing I've been learning a lot this last year is um, to lead with self-love, you know, to lead with self-care as like a, a powerful way of, of, you know, doing our work. Like that's part of the work we have to do is to love and care for ourselves and for one another. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all, y'all inspire me a ton. Um, so beautiful to see your faces and to hear and hear your wisdom and to share and just to be in the same community with y'all. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful, you know, ever since we got together at Good Medicine Camp, um with earth guardians <laughs> last summer and man we just had this beautiful training and all these beautiful natives came from all over the place and we were doing everything from you know praying together and in ceremony to you know learning organizing tactics to like staging you know uh jumping in the river and like staging you know <laughs> encampment resistance like keeping people from the borders type it's crazy um so crazy. epic so epic <laughs> so epic okay. man and I can't wait till, till you know, this, this pandemic um, has run its course and, and we get on the other side of it so we can gather in person again because I feel like some of the most powerful moments that I've ever experienced are, are with the two of you, honestly. And, like, when we've been together cultivating this, like, collective vision of, like, yo, this is how we need it to be. We need to be on the land fighting for the youth, opening healing spaces and, like, revolutionizing the work. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. There's, there's a lot of work ahead of us and I'm, and I'm grateful and I'm honored and y'all always know, like, if you guys ever need anything, I'm here. Um, this platform is here, you know, and, um, I want to thank One Earth Live for opening up the space for this little discussion. My boy, Jai, surf on the beat one time. Um, and yeah, maybe continue to do our work and walk in a good way and, and, and remember that, you know, these, uh, us, us claiming spaces in, in these conferences, in these networks, in these digital spaces, that's important. People need to see your faces and hear your voices. And, you know, I've been doing this for so long, like I'm ready to just like pass the torch, you know, and, and, and let y'all shine and let y'all speak and let your truth come through. Um, so I'm just grateful to be witnessing like what really will be the future of, of um, our indigenous communities and our, our nations. You know, y'all are the future of, of, as you, bro, you put it so well, Nina, that we are like preparing ourselves and being ancestors right now for our descendants. Like that is so powerful. Um, so unless y'all have any, literally, literally, if y'all have anything else to add, um, <laughs> empowered and inspired and grateful for this conversation, but thank y'all so much for your time. Thank you. This was so cool. So awesome. It's kind mm -hmm. of on, but I'm really glad that you, you got me into <laughs> But like, uh, I miss you guys so much. And yeah, I miss you guys so much. We did that. <laughs> much love, y'all. Thank you so much. Peace.